Hello everyone! I've been drawing a lot of Pokemon art lately and for the longest time I couldn't stop thinking about how my characters would be like if they were in Pokemon. So that's what we're doing today. I'll be taking the main characters from my webcomic Cryptid Lake and reimagining them as if they were part of the Pokemon universe. Also, before we begin, I have a huge announcement, so please stick around. I'll tell you more about it later on in the video. And now, let's get to it. I want to start the video off with the character that I think would be the perfect protagonist slash playable character, Willow. Willow is a very happy and optimistic young girl, often the one that keeps the spirits up, even in tough situations. She's a go-getter that never gives up, she's also very particular with her very specific interests. In Cryptid Lake she has a love for everything mysterious, from secret societies to cryptids and ghosts. She loves the paranormal and odd creatures, so I have no doubt that she would want to become a Pokemon trainer if she ever got the chance to. Not only to be surrounded by Pokemon that she would love unconditionally, but also because it would be a perfect excuse to go out, explore the woods to try and find creatures even more mysterious than her own Pokemon. She also loves outdoor activities, such as hiking and camping, as well as foraging, so I'm pretty sure she would have no problem spending all her time traveling across the land. I believe she would be the type to look really hard for shinies and she would be really interested in legendary Pokemon as well. I imagine this would make her get easily distracted and that she would inevitably end up getting to the different gyms a little later than everyone else. In Cryptid Lake, Willow is a witch and she is getting to an interesting age where she'll have to choose which type of coven she wants to be in and which type of magic she wants to specialize in. But there's a slight problem. Willow is a late bloomer, so she hasn't shown much magical abilities and thus she isn't quite sure which type of magic she wants to pursue. In this Pokemon world, I feel like that would translate into her not knowing which type of Pokemon she likes most. Because of that, I decided to give her an Eevee as her main Pokemon. Since, like an Eevee, Willow has the potential to become whatever she wants, she just needs to be nudged in the right way. She's really close to her sister Enid, since they have very similar interests, they spend a lot of time together and they are each other's best friends. In Cryptid Lake, Enid is a particularly strong witch and so Willow looks up to her and tries to learn with her so she can follow in her big sister's footsteps. I imagine the same thing would happen in Pokemon. Speaking of Willow's older sister, let's talk about Enid. Enid is a very anxious girl that happens to be quite powerful in her magical abilities. The adults in her life think of her as a prodigy, but they can also recognize that that comes at a cost, that being her ability to socialize properly. She's shy with new people, she can get awkwardly quiet and she'll hide her face in her hat if she gets too embarrassed. She's very sensitive and she was often a target for bullying from the other witches in the academy. But she finds solace in her studies and flashy spells that she can come up with. Much like her sister, she has a special interest in cryptids and the paranormal, as well as mysteries and fun conspiracy theories. She spends oh so long listening to cryptozoology and paranormal podcasts, reading creepypastas, watching analog horror and listening to horror audio novels with her sister. I think they would particularly love the Magnus archives or something similar to that. Like I mentioned before, Enid is a prodigy, so I believe that in this Pokemon AU she would be the region's champion. With Enid, I always go back and forth with the way she presents herself. On the one hand, she's a very nervous girl and so you'd think that she would get really shy when performing in a stadium, and she does, at least until the battle starts. You see, in Pokemon, her magical abilities would be translated into Pokemon training abilities. And sure, Enid is shy, 
but she feels completely at ease when performing magic, confident even. Often when I draw her casting spells, she's graceful and even somewhat theatrical. She's in her element and nothing can stop her and I imagine she would feel the same when participating in Pokemon battles. When she started her trainer journey, she would probably look for a new Pokemon obsessively, so I have no doubt that she was the first kid in class to complete the entirety of her Pokedex. I think that this state of mind was the reason she was able to find and befriend her main Pokemon, Jirachi. I'm gonna be honest, I chose this one because it's so aesthetically fitting with Enid and nothing else. Enid realizes that Willow looks up to her and that she wants to become the region's champion just like her, so I imagine that this hypothetical game would start on Willow's 12th birthday when Enid gives Willow her first Pokemon. On to Oliver. Oliver is a laid-back and snarky fella that loves to tease his friends. He appears to be very confident and he is especially well-loved by his peers. He is as loyal as one can get and he would do pretty much anything for his friends. He is very good friends with Enid, Enid and Oliver are very different and in typical circumstances Enid would probably feel too intimidated by Oliver to ever talk to him, but in Cryptid Lake they are paired up together so that Enid can find her footing as a new camp counselor. Thus, after a little rocky of a start, they became close friends. In this Pokemon AU, I believe Oliver and Enid probably met when both of them were first starting their journey as Pokemon trainers. Oliver probably watched her first gym battle and got really curious about her, he struck up a conversation, Enid was in fact intimidated by him, but she quickly felt at ease with him. Since then, Enid became the region's champion and Oliver became the ghost type gym leader. Both of them are very successful and revered in the Pokemon training world. Unlike the sisters, Oliver isn't too interested in cryptozoology and even ghosts are a bit of an uncomfortable topic with him. In Cryptid Lake, he plays the role of the skeptic, the non-believer, the sensible one. I believe that in this Pokemon AU, his feelings would be very similar. This would make his decision to be a ghost-type Pokemon trainer very odd, but somehow it makes sense. I feel like he'd be into ghost-type Pokemons out of pity, as many ghost-type Pokemons have incredibly sad origins. He himself doesn't particularly look like a ghost-type gym leader, with his outfit being more sporty than the usual creepier and more elaborate outfits that we see with other ghost-type gym leaders. But then again, it makes sense as his intentions when becoming a ghost-type Pokemon trainer were very different than your average gym leader. And now let's take a little break for me to make a big announcement. Cryptid Lake is about Enid and Willow who are obsessed with mysteries and as such they decide to spend their holidays in a summer camp known for its cryptid sightings and paranormal occurrences. In this summer camp they also meet people that, like them, want to uncover and record all the mysteries, secrets and shady business Shed Eye Lake has to offer. I've been working on Cryptid Lake for about a year now and so I'm finally ready to set a release date. So I'm really happy to announce that Cryptid Lake's final version is going to be released on Halloween October 31st on Tapas and Webtoon. On Tapas I'm going to be releasing two pages per week while I'll release one episode every two weeks on Webtoon. I hope to make a Q&A video about Cryptid Lake closer to the release date, so leave all your questions about the project down in the comments. You can ask whatever you want, from story and characters to my process and more technical aspects of making a comic. I hope to have you on the launch day, and now let's get back into the video. Now let's talk about our lovely sheep girl, Dolly. Dolly is this very sweet young girl. She keeps to herself most of the time, she's a scaredy cat and gets scared easily. 
I wouldn't say she's shy since she's actually pretty open with everyone. She doesn't mind speaking her mind or anything like that, but she definitely prefers to stay out of conflicts. And she likes being by herself from time to time. I guess you can say she's introverted. I also love to think that she's a huge nerd. <laughs> she loves to study, she loves to read, she loves cartoon shows and anime, and she's definitely part of multiple fandoms. What can I say, she's a fangirl. I think that in her day to day she's pretty casual about it, but when online she is a pretty active member of multiple communities. One of those communities is the cryptozoology and paranormal community because yes, despite being scared of almost everything, she's super interested in scary things. Call it what you want, morbid curiosity, masochism, I'd say it's more of a comfort topic for her because her dad used to be super into it and they bonded together over that. In this Pokemon AU, Dolly would be our friendly rival. I noticed that most Pokemon games have somewhere between 1 to 3 different rivals. In Pokemon Shield, which is the one that I played, you have Hop, who is a friendly rival. Marnie, who is also pretty friendly, although she is a bit more cold. And then you have Bede, who is kind of a jerk. In this AU, Dolly fits Hop's role as uh, your very first rival, as well as your friendly rival. Interestingly enough, I feel like Dolly would be pretty analytical about Pokemon battle strategies, a little bit like Hop as well. She either met Willow on Road 1 or after the first gym battle and they became quick friends. Dolly also exhibits a lot of potential as a Pokemon trainer and she's happy to grow as a trainer alongside her friends. She would be a fairy type trainer for sure. And finally we have Harriet. Harriet is the pinnacle of what it's like to be an edgy 14 year old that is trying her best to find out who she is as a person and thus is pretty experimental when it comes to fashion. She also has edgy likes, like heavier music, rock and heavy metal, horror movies, slashers, haunted house experiences, creepypastas, r slash no sleep stories, among other things. She's sassy and sometimes even antagonistic towards other kids. What can I say, she's an edgy teen that still has a lot of growing up to do. So of course, in this Pokemon AU, she would try to be a dark type Pokemon trainer. She loves edgy Pokemons. Harriet is an overachiever, she likes success, and her biggest wish is to be the best at everything. She loves to feel like the smartest one in the room, this, of course, leads to problems with the other kids, especially her brother and Dolly. Even though most kids don't like her very much, they still listen to her, in some ways, as she is very confident, practical and efficient. She can be very blunt when she speaks, and this is most obvious in a relationship with Dolly. It seems that at some point they got along pretty well, but now Harriet seems to have not much patience for her. Harriet, much like the other girls in the group, lives cryptozoology and the paranormal, and so she easily became friends with Willow. Even so, in this Pokemon AU, Harriet would fill in the role of the less friendly and more competitive rival. In this AU, I also imagined that the three young girls would travel together from gym to gym, not only because they make a nice friend group, but also because I think that all of them would be pretty interested in learning with each other. Despite all I've said about Harriet's ego, she's not one to dismiss others' abilities. And with that, thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you'd like the video. If you want to see more stuff from me, I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at momopurin underscore chan and on Kara at momopurin. Thank you so much and until next time, 